It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the BenQ EW3280U. The OSD is controlled by either a little joystick at the rear of the monitor along the right-hand side. There are also some little pressable buttons that go alongside that. Alternatively, you can use this little OSD remote, which I find very handy indeed. So it's a little infrared remote, like a TV-style one. There's an infrared sensor built into there. The range of the remote is actually quite good. You can use it across the room if you want. You don't have to necessarily be right near the sensor as I am here. But there's lots of decent functionality there. Lots of little useful shortcut keys. You've got a power button, which turns the monitor on or off, as you'd expect. There's a source select button, which allows you to quickly change the input used by the monitor. There's an OK button, which is Enter. And also a little directional dial there, so up, down, left or right, as you use to navigate the different options or go through the OSD system. So that does the same as the joystick does. There's an HDRI button, so if you press that you can change the HDR mode, and I'll go through these when I get to them in the main menu system. There's a low blue light shortcut key. If you press that you can cycle through different low blue light settings, or if you just press it once it'll cycle between having the setting off and the last low blue light setting that you use, so in my case that was reading. There's a setting which allows you to change the audio scenario for the integrated speakers, and I'll go through that again in the main menu system. And there is a button to mute the speakers, decrease the volume or increase the volume. And that would control something connected to the 3.5mm jack if you're using that rather than the integrated speakers of the monitor. And now to quickly go through the other buttons, there's a little scroll wheel here which controls the volume of the integrated speaker or anything connected to the 3.5 millimeter jack for using that instead. The first two buttons on the back of the monitor they're custom keys you can customize them in the OSD as I'll show you shortly in the main section of the OSD. So I've got mine set to color mode, low blue light or user so you can e quickly cycle between modes you might use frequently so these are the two I like to use and the second button down is another custom key so I've got that showing three different color mode presets that you can cycle between. I don't really use them myself, it's just, um, I believe this was actually the default setting for that one. There's then the joystick, which activates the main OSD system, and there's a power button. So if you press the joystick in any direction, you get this little quick menu up, and that has exit. You can quickly change the brightness if you twiddle the joystick up. You can go into the main menu system by twiddling the joystick to the right, or if you twiddle the joystick down, you can adjust the contrast. So the main menu system, you can also activate that by just pressing that button there on the OSD remote. It's laid out in BenQ's now usual style for most of their monitors. So the first section there is input. It allows you to select the input used by the monitor. And if they're greyed out, it means you don't have anything connected to that, any particular source. So I'm just using DisplayPort at the moment. But greyed out, there's also USB-C, HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. Next, there's picture. So you can adjust things like the brightness, the contrast, the sharpness level, and that's adjusted in increments of 1, between 1 and 10. 5 is the default, and I'm perfectly happy with that, but you can adjust that according to your preferences. Advanced, which allows you to change the dynamic contrast setting, and this is explored in the review. As it says there, activating dynamic contrast will disable brightness and contrast controls. It's explored in the written review, I should say. Display mode. This only really applies if you're using a non-native resolution. In fact, it doesn't really do anything if you're using a native resolution. But you can see that full is the only option available to me at the moment. There's also aspect and one-to-one. -one. If I quickly switch over to the full HD resolution, for example, you'll now see that display mode has full and one-to-one. -one. So one-to-one -one is the one-to-one -one pixel mapping feature. So that means it'll only use the pixels called for in the source resolution to display the image completely undistorted. And there'll be a big black border around the rest of the image. There's also an aspect setting that that's greyed out, unless you're using a resolution which doesn't have the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which the monitor has. And that means it'll maintain the correct aspect ratio for the source resolution, but will use interpolation to fill up the rest of the screen as much as possible. And this is what happens if you're using the full setting with a full HD resolution. It's using all of the pixels, and it uses an interpolation process, a scaling process, and that's all explored in the written review. And just to quickly show you what 2560 by 1440 the WQHD resolution looks like with the one-to-one -one setting, you again get a black border, but it's a lot smaller because you're using up more of the pixels of the screen for the high resolution. 
There's an overscan setting, which only applies if you're using an older system. It's greyed out for most systems and certainly is with my system. Super resolution. This is another sharpness filter. You can adjust that between zero, which is off, and three, which is the strongest effect. And you can use that in conjunction with the other sharpness control. You might find this useful if you're perhaps using a non-native resolution on the monitor, like I was showing you just before. Next is Smart Focus, and what that does is it puts a little box on the screen, or a big box, depending on the setting you're using, and it just makes it so that the apparent brightness, the digital brightness, is different to the rest of the screen, so it can help people focus on that particular area of the screen. You can also change the horizontal and vertical position of the box, so you can have it anywhere on the screen you want. Well, there's a scaling option, which basically gives you more control over the size. So pretty good flexibility with this if you like to use that kind of setting. You could have it in the top right showing a map on a game or something like that, for example. Although you can't change how dim or bright the box looks in relation to the rest of the screen, except that it will follow the brightness you've got set to the monitor. But the relative difference is always going to be just set by the monitor and you can't adjust that. Next is colour. You can change the colour mode of the monitor, the preset used by the monitor. The user mode is very flexible, I like to use that, and I talk about that in the written review. I use that for my test settings. Low blue light, so if you select this, there are various different options. The low blue light settings is a little bit confusing. When you activate it, it just activates the last setting you were using with the low blue light preset. But if you go into eye care, which is another section of the menu, you'll see that there are various different settings listed here. So multimedia has the weakest effect, Web surfing stronger, office stronger, reading stronger again. These are mentioned in the calibration section of the written review. There's also e-paper, which makes the image grayscale, as well as giving an effective low blue light effect. The reading setting doesn't have that grayscale look, but it's also a very effective low blue light setting, which I like to use for my own purposes in the evening, where you should be exposing yourself to as little blue light as possible to try and get your body in a relaxed state for sleep. You can also adjust the brightness with any of these low blue light settings as well, so you're not restricted in that respect. And again, they become more effective if you reduce the brightness further. You'll get less light outputted from the monitor, which includes blue light. Next is REC 709. That is an sRGB emulation setting, again explored in the written review. It restricts the colour gamut, and it also sets things to a very dim level by default, but you can adjust the brightness but you'll see that you can't adjust the colour temperature. Another restriction is that if you go to advanced, you can't change things like the gamma, hue or saturation with this setting. Next is colour weakness, and again, this is configurable in the eye care setting under colour weakness. And this allows you to modify a red and green filter of the screen. And you can do this if you've got colour blindness, or as it's called in some countries, colour weakness. So this could help you distinguish different shades on the monitor. you need to use that kind of thing. Next is MBook, which is supposed to more closely match the output of MacBooks, and it changes the gamma and, and various other things to try and achieve that. The standard, which is the factory default setting, and this gives you decent flexibility. You can adjust lots of different things, although you can't change the colour temperature to user defined, so that means you can't adjust the red, green, and blue color channels manually, which is why I wasn't using this setting. Although for most users, actually the standard setting with just reduced brightness will work very nicely. It certainly would if, if the calibration is anything like it was on my unit. Next is HDR mode. So if you're using an SDR signal, as I am right now, these are just HDR emulation settings. There's not much to say about them really. You can't emulate HDR. You either have an HDR signal or you don't. So all this is really doing is it's adjusting the gamma and the color temperature, various other things. So the display HDR setting, this just adjusts things based on what's being displayed on the screen, whereas the game HDRI and cinema HDRI settings, they include brightness intelligence plus, and that means that it uses a light sensor, which is built into that little box in the center of the bottom bezel, along with the little IR sensor for the remote. and this means that various changes are going to be made to the image based on the ambient lighting of the room as well. I don't agree with these 
changes, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I actually talk about Brightness Intelligence Plus on its own. So I prefer the display HDR setting, but I don't like using emulation settings for HDR anyway. I see them as pretty pointless, but some users will like this kind of wacky, oversaturated look with strange gamma handling. It's kind of cinematic in some ways, but it's not for me. And it's not HDR, there's nothing HDR about what it's doing. Next is audio, so you can change the audio scenario that's used for the integrated speakers. Live slash pop, which is my preferred one. This makes very good use of a subwoofer, so there's quite decent bassiness, certainly better than you'd get on most integrated monitor speakers. Various different options here according to your preferences, so they change the equalizer basically. The dialogue slash vocal could make sense, and some of the others might make sense if you were finding the bass a bit overwhelming. You might find this if you're listening to some content where people are talking a lot, and sometimes it can be a little bit booming with a subwoofer, especially if you've got the monitor fairly close to the wall, or just in general because the monitor has a large plastic uh, back and it's not the ideal acoustic environment and all that stuff. But you know, I'm not an audio expert or an audio file, so I'm not going to talk much more about this. I do discuss this a little bit in the written review. I'll have a little bit of a section talking about that. You can adjust the volume of those speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack, or you can mute them. Next is eye care, and you can see some of that's greyed out because it does depend on the preset you're using. So if you're using the user preset, it doesn't actually let you access some of that functionality. So if I select standard, it will allow me to adjust everything here. So there's BI+, plus, Brightness Intelligence+, plus, and this does what I was describing with the HDR settings before, but this applies more generally when you're not using HDR and with other settings such as standard as I'm using now. It's going to be making adjustments to brightness, colour temperature, and a few other things, but mainly those two, according to the ambient lighting in the room. But you have no manual control over this. You can see that the brightness is greyed out, and I don't agree with the change it's making, and other people will have their own preferences. So I see this is a very restrictive setting, which, to be fair, most users aren't really going to want to use. But have a play with it, you might like it. Light meter, on or off. This just gives you a little on-screen notification to give you an idea of the level of brightness in the room according to the sensor. If you have the setting off, the eye off disabled, there's also adjust by duration. What that does is it makes the color temperature progressively warmer. So it starts off with whatever setting you were using before you enabled this. Then it gets progressively warmer if you've had the monitor on for longer. So if you're using the monitor all day, this could well make sense. Um, and by the evening, you should have a warmer color temperature. I tend to use the monitor throughout the day, sort of quite sporadically. I don't always have it on all day. And in this case, it doesn't really make sense to do this. You'll just manually use a low blue light setting in the evening if you want that kind of effect. But it's kind of a nice feature to have, I guess, for some users. I think it would have been nice to have a bit of flexibility, or perhaps if there was a clock or something, it was time aware, aware of the time of day, that might have been particularly useful. This eye reminder, which will just remind you to take a break from the monitor after a given amount of time has elapsed. Low blue light settings, which I've been through, color weekly, which I've also been through. Custom key. So those first buttons there, the, the top and the bottom button at the back of the monitor, these are the custom keys. So you can set that to color mode, for example, and you can have it cycle between your low blue light settings and user, as I had here, or you can have other things selected, up to three in total, or you can just have two if you just want to quickly toggle between them. Or you can have it change the HDR mode or cycle between different HDR modes, inputs, audio scenario, and again, you can either pick two or three, depending on how you want this to work. So let's just set this to switch between the HDR modes and the first one to switch between those color modes. So you can see there, they're listed as you'd expect for that first button there. And then for the second button down, you've got the HDR modes. Finally, there's system that allows you to change things like the language that the OSD is displayed in, in OSD settings at the top there, the language, how long the OSD is displayed after the last button press before it automatically disappears, um, most monitors actually, BenQ is a little bit strict with this, they would only go up to a maximum of 20 seconds. Quite a few other monitors from, from other manufacturers, they'd let you maybe go up to a minute or two minutes perhaps, depending on the manufacturer. OSD lock, so you can lock the OSD, make it more difficult for family members to use it. 
And I remember this from the last PenQ monitor I used. So now the OSD is locked, and if you try and press anything on the remote, it's not going to do anything. Except if you press the power button, you can turn the monitor on and off. But if you turn it on again, the OSD lock will still be enabled. And I commonly get people asking me how to unlock things. So on this monitor, all you do is it says when you actually press one of the buttons, press and hold any key for five seconds to unlock the OSD. Pretty self-explanatory. So you can't do that from the remote, but you can do it by pressing one of the keys on the back of the monitor. There's DDC slash CI, which allows you to use software as part of the plug and play functionality of the monitor to use software to adjust the OSD settings. Input auto switch, which will allow you to either have the monitor select the input itself if that's selected as on, or you can manually select the input used if that's off. Auto power off, so after a given amount of time that the monitor has lost a signal to the system, it'll turn off as if you press the off button. Quite useful feature, actually. I keep forgetting it has it and I didn't have it switched on before. It can be quite useful if you can't be bothered to use the power button. LED indicator, so there's a little power LED. It's quite faint, not particularly obtrusive at all, so I just leave it on. But if it's annoying you for whatever reason, you can just turn the indicator off in the OSD. There you go, it's not illuminated anymore. There's resolution notice, so that will just give you a little notice on the screen if you're not using the native resolution of the monitor, just to remind you of that. So if that's annoying you, if you keep switching resolutions, then you can just turn this resolution notice feature off. Information gives you various information, such as the input used, the current resolution, optimum resolution, and current resolution will change if you're using adaptive sync and it's within the variable refresh rate window. That means your game is running between 40 and 60 frames a second if you're using free sync. Then that means that this will display on the current resolution your current frame rate as well. And I'll keep changing based on that. It also tells you if you're using HDR and just the model name in case you can't remember, EW3280U. And reset all, which will reset everything to the factory defaults. Just one final thing to note, there's a little silicon mat. BenQ didn't include it on my unit, but they definitely should have it. And this is this picture's from the EX2780Q, because it's exactly the same design. And that's just a little mat that you can set the remote on when you're not using it. And you can change the position of the mat, if you like, anywhere in the middle of the stand base. But that's really all there is to the OSD, on-screen display menu system of the BenQ EW3280U. Be sure to check out the full review on pcmonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.